Uh, let's start right off the top. Here's Bobby Jindal, uh, and he's going to tell us that Americans can do anything. Good evening, and happy Mardi Gras. I'm Bobby Jindal, governor of Louisiana. Tonight, we witnessed a great moment in the history of our republic. In the very chamber where Congress once voted to abolish slavery, our first African-American president stepped forward to address the state of our union. With his speech tonight, the president completed a redemptive journey that took our Leesburg to the lunch counter. And now, regardless of party, all Americans are moved by the president's personal story. The son of an American mother and a Kenyan father who grew up to become leader of the free world. Mm. Like the president's father, my own parents came to this country from a distant land, only four and a half months pregnant. I was what folks in the insurance industry now call a pre-existing condition. <laughs> to find work, my dad picked up the yellow pages and started calling local businesses. Even after landing a job, he still couldn't afford to pay for my delivery, so he worked out an installment plan with the doctor. Fortunately for me, he never missed a payment. As I grew up, my mom and dad taught me the values that attracted them to this country, and they instilled in me an immigrant's wonder at the greatness of America. As, I, as a child, I remember going to the grocery store with my dad. Growing up in India, he had seen extreme poverty. As we walked through the aisles, looking at the endless variety on the shelves, he would tell me, Bobby, Americans can do anything. I still believe that to this day. Americans can do anything. Golly gee willikers, I really believe now. And then my daddy would take me down the aisle and I'd see cocoa pebbles and fruity pebbles. I said, that's amazing, Daddy. And he'd say, yes, in America, you can do anything, including cocoa and fruity pebbles. <laughs> All right. So I'm watching this thing, and I'm like, wait, this guy reminds me of somebody, man. And I'm thinking, what, that, when, especially when he goes high pitch, I'm like, wait, I've heard that voice somewhere before. Where have I heard it? And I was like, oh, I got it. It's Kenneth the Page on 30 Rock. He speaks exactly like that. He's, like, of course, a fictional character on a TV show where he's supposed to be a bit of a country bumpkin. And he's, he's like, oh, and my daddy told me that anything is possible in America. And so I thought I was a genius for figuring it out. And then I go on the Internet. Everybody's calling him Kenneth the Page. <laughs> okay. Uh, there was apparently in the first hour after Bobby Jindal's response, 75,000 hits on Google putting in Bobby Jindal, Kenneth the Page. <laughs> That's awesome. So now you're going to get a lot more of uh, Kenneth uh, <laughs> as we uh, go forward. Now, uh, Bobby Jindal is already off to a rocky start, but uh, this second clip is probably my favorite. Uh, this tells a story of, you know, two good politicians and, and local, uh, you know, office holders who are fighting against the darn bureaucrats. And it, of course, has a terrible moral of the story. If you ask me, I'll explain after we watch the clip. Here's Governor Bobby Jindal. Today in Washington, some are promising that government will rescue us from the economic storms raging all around us. Those of us who lived through Hurricane Katrina, we have our doubts. Let me tell you a story. Oh, great. During Katrina, I visited Sheriff Harry Lee, a Democrat and a good friend of mine. When I walked into his makeshift office, I had never seen him so angry. He was literally yelling into the phone. Well, I'm the sheriff, and if you don't like it, you can come and arrest me. I asked him, Sheriff, what's got you so mad? <laughs> he told me they'd put out a call for volunteers to come with their boats to rescue people who were trapped on their rooftops by the floodwaters. The boats were all lined up and ready to go. And then some bureaucrat showed up and told them they couldn't go out in the water unless they had proof of insurance and registration. And I told him, Sheriff, that's ridiculous. Before I knew it, he was yelling on the phone. Congressman Jindal is here, and he says you can come and arrest him too. <laughs> Harry just told those voters, ignore the bureaucrats and go start rescuing people. There's a lesson in this experience. The strength of America is not found in our government. I love this, man. The lesson I learned in this experience is Bobby Jindal's got no shot in 2012. <laughs> oh, golly gee willikers, this is more folks than Sarah Palin. In fact, some commentators have said, you know what? Sarah Palin had to be smiling in Alaska. This was the greatest gift she, she could have received. 
And by the way, the lesson you got from Hurricane Katrina was that we had too much government? Wasn't the problem that we didn't have enough government rescuing those people? And he says, no, the government. And then I said, hey, golly gee, Sheriff, what's the matter? <laughs> and he said, oh, they're requiring insurance and proof of registration before we go in the water. Jindal, get, get in the water. Okay, I don't believe that story. Even if that story was even partly true. It's, so what? There are people that are dying. You get in the uh, water and you do it. I just... It, that story has BS written all over. Second of all, they're ridiculous for even pausing. What should we do? You check with the government bureau guys? Get in the frickin' water already. Get in the boats and go get the people. And they didn't. They didn't get the people. Over a thousand people died in Hurricane Katrina. Cause not because the government was too large, but because government was too small. They did not respond. That's what we need the government for. I can't believe he drew that moral of the story. Please. This is embarrassing.